Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com and today we'll be learning more about meningitis. So what is meningitis exactly? Meningitis is one of the most severe infections that occurs throughout our life. It's an infection of the envelope that surrounds the brain and the spinal cord. Are there different types? The two main types that we see are the viral meningitis and those are seen more in the summertime and they tend to be less severe as a group. And there's the bacterial meningitis, which are much more severe, and the consequences uh, are much more present long-term for the kids or the adults who get this infection. How common is meningitis? We've had a lot of successes in the past with vaccines preventing the more common types. There's one type that persists called uh, meningococcal meningitis, and these occur uh, about, in about 300 kids or adults per year in Canada. How is meningitis transmitted? Meningitis is really bad luck when it happens to an individual. Uh, it's transferred from person to person and it's through droplets, we say. So if you cough and you spray some very small droplets, uh, the bacteria can be transported and aspirated in the other person in front of you. So it's through these droplets or through sharing a glass or, or older kids or adults a cigarette. Uh, they can get it from that. Who would you say is most at risk of contracting meningitis? It's really children under five, especially under one, and uh, older teenagers and young adults are also at risk. And uh, the university population of kids is also a group that has been noted as being at risk for this type of meningitis. What are some signs and symptoms that we should look out for? So the symptoms of meningitis initially can look like the flu, where children or adults will have a fever, uh, they may have headache, uh, they may vomit, uh, they feel achy all over. So those are the initial symptoms. Uh, as the disease progresses, the more typical symptoms of a stiffness of the neck, of becoming very lethargic and tired, uh, the headache becomes more severe, uh, some individuals may go on to have convulsions. Uh, so those are the typical symptoms for meningitis. I read something about a rash. So with meningococcal meningitis, uh, you can also have rashes that appear, and these look like bruises. So initially, when you have one, you think maybe I bruised myself, but then they can spread all over the body, and they can look quite angry, and it looks like a red, purplish bruise. What is the typical incubation period? The incubation period uh, from having been exposed to getting the disease is usually less than a week. Tell us about some of the short and long-term effects of this illness. For meningococcal meningitis, which is, like I say, the most common one that we see, 10% uh, of individuals who have this meningitis will die. And these tend to die within 24 to 48 hours of the onset of the disease, so it's a very aggressive disease. Of the survivors, 10 to 20% will have long-term sequelae. Uh, these include neurological problems, such as uh, being paralyzed, uh, becoming uh, deaf, uh, having um, uh, seizure disorders, uh, people will have school problems, attention problems, uh, developmental problems, uh, behavior problems. So those are the neurological problems that can follow meningitis. Uh, some individuals will also lose a limb from having had meningitis because of the poor circulation throughout the body associated with this type of meningitis. What are the preventative measures we can take to avoid meningitis? The only prevention that we have is through vaccination and there have been vaccinations that have been made available to the population in the past and there are new ones that will be coming which will protect us against the more common meningitis that we see today. And what about treatment options? Treatment is fast medical care, intravenous antibiotics, usually you end up in intensive care in a hospital, but even with all of those treatments, there still is 10% death and 10 to 20% of long-term sequela. So again, the best treatment is to prevent it, and the vaccines do a good job with that and are, have been shown to be safe. If you get meningitis once, can you get it again? Yes, so you can get it more than once in your life. So uh, having had it once doesn't protect you from getting it again. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.